Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. I'm Jennifer. I'm the owner of Auburn Yoga and Pilates and tonight we will be doing a live gentle-ish yoga class. The goal of this one is to give you a little bit of an energy boost if you feel like you need one. So I hope you'll join us. So getting started in a comfortable seated position and as you probably know by now, if you've been watching along, that sitting on a folded blanket or a pillow may make you more comfortable. So really lifting up nice and tall up through the crown of the head and then inhaling through your nose all the air you can fit. And then slowly exhaling out your mouth. And again, inhaling through your nose all the air you can fit. And exhaling slowly out your mouth. One more time. Inhaling through your nose all the air you can fit. And exhaling slowly out your mouth. Now, Try to keep the same depth of breath, but make it a purely nostril breath. So let the inhale go through the nose and let the exhale go through the nose. But try not to let that breath diminish at all. Trying to keep it really solid and strong. And then bring your attention to something that you need to manifest into your day today. What do you need? If it's a little bit more energy, hopefully this class will solve the problem. trying to draw your attention to what you need. And then start to paint a picture that you have it. And then add more details to your picture. Add some sounds. Add some sense. What about overall feeling? How are you feeling? Once you receive what you need. Trying to let that feeling fill you up. And we'll just hold it in this place for a little two minute meditation.
Taking a deep breath. Switching the cross of your legs and circling your spine. So starting right here at the beginning, energizing those energy centers in the back, those chakras. Trying to get them moving so that you don't have any stagnant or clogged energy. And then reverse direction. Holding it in the center, coming into the lateral stretches, reaching the upper arm nice and long, keeping your shoulders and your ribs squared to the front of the room, and just moving with your own breath, no specific pace from side to side. And you decide how deep you want to make that lateral stretch today. What feels more perfect? A really deep lateral stretch or something more moderate? Different days, different answers. And last one. And bringing it into an all fours position on your mat lining up those wrist creases so that they're parallel to the short end of the mat. If you have blocks, you may want them for some of the poses later on. Let your pelvis still toward the floor. And then pull your abdominals up towards your spine, root down through your knuckles and your fingertips and expand your back body. So, expanding your front body, expanding your back body, moving through cat and cow, bringing those big toe mounds together. Now, traditional child's pose, your thighs are parallelish to each other. For some people, that's not comfortable. So feel free to bring the knees a little wider and come into more of a fallen leaf if that feels like it's more appropriate for you. Now for this first one, we'll come into a puppy dog pose. So just taking those hands, walking them forward, keeping those hips over those knees, lengthening the spine. Coming up, walking those hands in. Now, keeping those wrists slightly ahead of those shoulders, curl those toes under, lift those knees and hips, and press back to downward facing dog. 
So if you have shoulder or wrist issues, you may find it more comfortable to go back to puppy dog. If your hamstrings or your back are tight, then put some softness in your knees. Otherwise, you're working on lengthening the arms, the spine, and the legs. And drop down to those knees. Now from here, flowing forward into a modified plank pose, and then, letting those hips come back towards your heels. They may go all the way back, they may come partially back. And then inhaling forward. Exhaling back. those abdominals. Think about lifting through that pelvic floor. But changing that flow of energy through that torso. position. Now, stepping one foot forward, and if you find that you just don't have the space to get that foot to come forward, then coming up onto blocks or books or boxes will help. So stepping that leg forward, and then curling that back to under, lift that leg, and then step it forward into a forward fold. So rest your hands on the floor or rest your hands on blocks. Inhaling, heart forward, head forward. Exhaling, fold forward. Inhale, sweeping those arms all the way up, reaching up through those fingertips. Really tall. And then exhaling those hands down by your side. So you can stand with your feet hip distance apart, or you can stand with your big toe mounds together. Entirely up to you. We're gonna exhale and sink down into a chair pose. And then we're gonna flow back up to a nice tall mountain, lift those knees, lift those thighs, lift the crown of the head. And flow. So you can sink down into a bar stool, or you can sink down into a little preschool chair. It's entirely up to you. Last one. Holding it nice and tall in that mountain pose. Deliberately thinking about growing roots down through your feet. Really allow yourself to feel grounded. And then we'll come into a modified sun salutation. So coming up, standing nice and tall at the top of that mat, we'll inhale, reach those arms up. Exhale, sweep those arms down. Heart forward, head forward, fold forward. Now take a giant step back with your right foot. Drop your back knee down, flatten that back foot, and then inhale, sweep your arms up as you allow your hips to sink down. Exhale, sweep those arms down. Now, taking that left foot, stepping back. And 
Coming into child pose. Coming back to an all fours position, and this time taking that right leg that was just back, stepping it forward. Inhale, sweep those arms up, lengthening through the spine, sinking down through the hips. Exhale, sweep those arms down, curl the back toe under, lift the back knee, step that back foot forward, heart forward, head forward, fold forward, inhale those arms up, <sighs> exhale those arms down. Let's try that again. So, inhaling up, exhaling down. So this is a variation of Surya Namaskar C. Not exactly. As the textbook writes it, take that left leg back, but fairly similar. Drop that back knee, flatten that back foot, inhale those arms up. Exhale those arms down, come back to child. Coming up, left foot steps forward. Sweep those arms up, sink down through those hips. Exhale, hands come down. Curl that back toe under, lift the back knee, back foot forward, heart forward, head forward, fold forward, inhale, sweep those arms up. Trying one more time on each side. So inhale those arms up, exhale those arms down. So if you weren't energized before, hopefully you are now. Take that right leg back. And anytime you feel a little low energy, lethargic, try doing a few sun salutations. It'll help. Take the leg back. Child. Coming forward. Right leg forward. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms down. Curl that back toe under, step forward. Heart forward, head forward, fold forward, coming up, coming down, and again, inhale up, exhale down, heart forward, head forward, fold forward, left leg back. Inhale the arms up, Exhale the arms down. Step back to child. Coming forward, left leg forward. Sweep the arms up. Exhale the arms down. Curl the back toe under, lift the back knee. Step it forward. Heart forward, head forward, fold forward. Inhale, sweep those arms up, exhale, standing into Dasana, that mountain pose, really again, growing roots down through your feet, but lifting the rest of you nice and tall. And then I'll just go to this end of the mat just so you can see what I'm doing on this first side. You don't have to move from where you are. You should be fine. From here, inhale those arms up. Exhale those arms down. Take a giant step back with your right foot. Now, ground that back foot so that the back foot is at 45 degrees. And you have a heel to heel alignment. Now coming up. Warrior one. So you're trying to spin your hip 
in the direction of the short end of the mat. You want a wide stance because this is a working lunge pose, but you don't want to be so wide that your back foot is rolling to the inside. From here, coming out to warrior two, so you're going to do a little bit of a foot dance. So that front heel bisects that back arch. Now you could be as low as 90 degrees at that front knee. That's pretty tough. Arms are up to the side in warrior two, and your rib cage and your shoulders are facing that wall. Long end of the mat. Now, dropping down and coming into a modified side angle pose. So resting your arm on that thigh, reaching that free arm up to the ceiling. So you've got your upper wrist stacked right over your shoulders. Now from here, take that arm, sweep it back. Don't lose the lunge. Reach through that arm, sinking into the lunge. Reverse warrior pose. And then lengthening that leg, but not locking that knee. And then take those hands, cartwheel them down to the top end of the mat. As you transition into a lunge, step back, rest in child's pose. So again, I'm just going to transition so that I'm facing you, but feel free to stay where you are. Coming up, you want your wrists just in front of your shoulders. Curl those toes under. Press back. Downward facing. Now from here, you can lift up to the balls of your feet and step or hop your feet forward. Or you can drop to your knees and step those feet forward one at a time. Heart forward, head forward, fold forward. Inhale those arms up. Exhaling those arms down. So again, rooting down, sort of regrouping. So this is a little more active than some of the other gentle yoga classes that we did, but I did promise you energizing, and I wouldn't want them to all be the same. I wouldn't want you to be bored. From here, inhaling those arms up, exhaling those arms down, heart forward, head forward, fold forward, left like that. Now ground that back foot, Heel to heel alignment, back foot at 45 degrees, come up into warrior one. So again, making sure your back foot isn't rolling. Make sure you're in significant enough of a lunge for you that you feel like you're doing some work. And now coming out, warrior two. So, heel to arch alignment, extend those arms. Remember, you could go as low as 90 degrees, that front knee. Coming into that modified side angle pose. Still, a heel to arch alignment. Really reaching through those fingertips. Try to find space in your front body through this. Come back, reverse warrior. those arms to the top of the mat, pivot into a lunge, drop that knee, slide that leg back, 
and coming into child's pose. Really letting yourself be heavy in your hips. You can reach your arms forward. You can drape your arms by your side, or you can prop your forehead up on your fists, your forearms, or a block. Find really what works for you. for the shoulders. You can always do a puppy dog or a down dog to modify. Now your, your alignment on this one is very important because you want to do it safely for your shoulders. So I'm just turning so you can see. You want your shoulders, your elbows rather, to be shoulder distance apart. You don't want to let your elbows go out wider than your shoulders. You want to keep them here in this placement. From there, you're going to take your forearms forward. Again, make sure that your elbows do not go out any further. It's very tempting, but it'll stress the shoulders and that area at the upper back, lower neck. Interlace those hands and then tuck your pinky fingers under so that your the side of your hand and your wrists can touch the mat. Then curl those toes under and come into a downward dog type pose where you're lengthening from your elbows to your hip for dolphin. So this pose is a lot of work. Feel free to drop down and rest if you feel like you need to. If you did drop down to rest, we'll go up one more time. Again, rest when you need to. Your head should be brushing the floor, but there should be no transfer of weight to your head. Some people, their head doesn't brush the floor. If you have fluffy hair, it probably will. And dropping down, coming into child's pose. So that is a big strengthener for your shoulders. Those of you who are missing your Nautilus machines at the gym or heavier weights than you have at home, that's a good one to do because basically you are supporting a large portion of your body weight. And then coming up into an all fours position, and coming into a seated position. You can sit right on your mat, or you can sit on a blanket or a pillow. And then taking your right leg in so that the knee is pointing upward and the bottom of the foot is flat to the floor. Really trying to sit nice and tall though. Reaching that left arm up. Again, sometimes it's tempting. Turn this way. Sometimes it's tempting to come back or slouch. We really want to try to keep the integrity of your spine. Try to keep it as vertical as possible. Now, twisting toward that bent leg. So, you can give it a gentle hug, like I am. You can hook your opposite elbow on the outside of that leg. Or those of you who have a binding practice, feel free to bind. 
If you don't know what I'm talking about, probably don't have a binding practice. So a gentle hug or a hook to be just perfect. But inhaling each and every time with each and every breath, and then exhaling into that twist. overall are energizing for the body. So they're good to put into your practice when you need an energy boost. Coming up, other side. So again, first just really focusing on sitting nice and tall. That's fine. Give it a hug or hook or find. back to center, lengthening that leg. Now, some people can just go into this pose. Um, other people, a little variation, you'd be able to get into it. Other people who have tight hips, you may want to just come into an easy seated or a butterfly position tonight. Um, you could do a seated pigeon, but it might be hard. You can't do the arms at the same time. And you may want a strap for your upper body. So one way to come into this pose, we're going to come into cow face pose, is to come into an all fours position. And cross your right knee directly in front of your left. So basically you've got one knee behind the other. Now this, I have tight hips. This pose is not one that I demonstrate all that well because you're supposed to have your knees stacked one on top of the other and your hips are supposed to be fairly level in that pelvic bowl. None of those things are really happening for me, but many of you are going to be able to go into that pose and really focus on the benefits of that hip opening. Now again, you can come into some sort of alternate position if you'd like. I'm just going to spin around so that you can see what happens with the upper body. So in that position that you're in, with just the lower half of cow face now, you are going to come into an upper body stretch that opens up the tricep, the shoulder, the chest. So, if your right leg is on top, lift your right arm up. If your left leg is on top, lift your left arm up. So reach that arm up. Now this is where you may want to hold a strap, a towel, a belt, anything here. Now modify, you're going to bend that arm, keep the upper arm vertical, and hold it here. Keeping that lower elbow relatively tucked in so that the upper arm bone of each arm is pretty vertical. Now what you can do is keep creeping those hands together and maybe clasp them. Another variation for your leg. 
legs is to come into Virasana. You could put a block underneath those hips or a blanket, or some people can sit right in it. So holding that for a couple more breaths. Release the upper body and then coming forward. Now placing that other knee in front. So the front leg is going to be the top leg. If you forgot which one you did first. And then coming back into the bottom half of cow face or Again, you can go into an easy seated position or you can go into Virasana. So, opening up those hips, if you're in the bottom half of cow face. And then the arm of the upper leg lifts. Dropping that arm, reaching behind you, either interlacing, keeping the strap, and obviously the more distant your hands are from each other, the easier this is gonna be if you have existing shoulder issues you're probably going to keep the wrist of that lower arm fairly low down your back. So holding here for a couple of breaths. down if you can and see if you can gaze to the right away from those legs if that's comfortable. up to the center, taking those legs back, hips back. Now, switch. Take that left leg, cross it over, lift those hips, swing them over to the left, let the legs drop to the right. Now, you play with those legs. Maybe you want to bring them closer to your torso. Maybe you want to bring them further from your torso. Maybe you want your knees closer together or further apart. There's so many options. 
find a nice deep but not overwhelming twist. center, uncrossing those legs, bringing those hips back to center, and extending those legs, bringing those arms down by your side. Bringing yourself into a place of final relaxation. Palms turn upward facing. Allowing yourself to really release your shoulders and your chest. Allow yourself to completely release your arms and your legs. Let them just melt into your mat. Relax the muscles in your back. Relax the muscles in your front torso. Release your jaw. How often do we clench our jaws without even realizing it? Relax the muscles and the cheeks and your face. Those surrounding your eyes and those in your forehead. And beginning to move your fingers, your toes, grounding your feet. Notice the difference in the energy flow in your body when you consciously ground yourself. Rolling to one side. Lifting to a seated position. Sort of repositioning yourself.
bringing those hands together. The light within me salutes the light within you. Namaste. Thanks for joining us. Sarah will be doing another flow yoga class tomorrow, so please join her. And please comment, like, share um, any of these videos that we're doing. And I know I've said in the last few that if you are willing to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you would enable us to also do YouTube live videos at the same time. So thank you for considering. Take care.